Good morning, my fellow scientists. It is Friday, July 7th, 2017. I want to talk to you about a new material used for cathodes in sodium batteries. We've talked about sodium batteries here in this vlog before, and I have argued that they have some advantages in terms of the cost of materials, but they're probably never going to overcome the high performance of lithium batteries just because lithium is such a small ion and you can fit so many of them into a very small space. That's hard to compete with. But sodium batteries could be extremely cheap, could enable grid-level storage just because there's so much more sodium available. We've talked previously about the challenges associated with sodium batteries, the fact that there aren't as many good separator materials nor as many good intercalator materials to store the sodium. But that seems to be on the mend. New material published this month talked about a great way to store sodium ions in a sodium cathode. So let's talk about how that works. So in any kind of sodium battery, you're going to need a source of sodium. Uh, in sodium ion batteries, that's going to be graphite, and you're going to keep your sodium ions stored inside the graphite, and they're going to come out through some form of separator and store themselves in some other material. And this can be something like uh, iron phosphate or iron sulfate. When that sodium comes out, it comes out as a positive ion, which means that it liberates electrons. Those electrons come across and meet up with the sodium ion on the far side. Where electrons are coming out is your anode, and where they are going in is your cathode. That's just the nomenclature. You can get rid of the graphite if you're brave and just make a pure sodium anode. So instead of storing sodium inside the little leaves of the graphite structure, you can just have sodium metal. The downside there, of course, is that sodium metal explodes in contact with water and is a fairly nasty substance to work with. It oxidizes in air, but you can do it. You can make a sodium metal anode that dissociates into sodium ions, which then travel through a separator. The uh, good enough paper from earlier this year talked about a new separator material made of a, a glass that can allow those sodium ions to pass through. And then you need something to efficiently take up these sodium ions on the far side. The trick here is that sodium ions are fairly big. So if you have a structure with fine layers and you try to fit a great big sodium ion in there, it's going to disrupt that structure and cause it to swell and distort and ultimately destroy your battery. So a new paper out very recently talked about a new material that can store sodium ions very efficiently. It has just the right size structure to absorb these sodium ions, kind of like a sponge. So here's that paper published in Advanced Materials last month. The paper talks about a sodium lithium manganese oxide. I think it's interesting that uh, manganese has been suggested to me in the comments of this vlog as a possible material for for such batteries. Uh, clearly it's an interesting one. The structure looks like this and you can see that the sodium is able to store itself in between tightly bound manganese oxide layers. As a final point of interest we can make a really really rough comparison of the energy storage capacity of this kind of battery by looking at the milliamp hours per gram and the voltage. So that's about 4 volts and about 0.2 amp hours per gram. That gives you about 0.8 watt hours per gram, which is significantly less than the lithium oxide cell we talked about yesterday for all the reasons I discussed before. So if you like learning about batteries, chemistry, science, new developments in energy storage, tune in next time. We update Monday through Friday. We talk about science and technological progress, Maybe even some of our own results here in the Allen Lab.